Welcome back everybody. Now we're getting into the actual firepower threat defense registration. That is, let's remember, the registration of the managed device, ASA or firepower appliance, with the management device, that being the firepower management center appliance. The very first thing we're going to go over though first is the modes in which we can deploy our physical appliances, the managed device. We can deploy it inline, inline tap, or passive mode. Folks, inline is literally using two interfaces and all the data must pass through this appliance and be processed according to our policies before it is sent out of the other interface. The good thing about this is all the data is again being processed in line real time. However, we can also go with an inline tap mode that I want to stress still uses two interfaces, but it works with a copy of the data. So again, while this data is still being forwarded on, that's what this orange line here is trying to indicate. While the security policy is being applied, I want to be clear, we're, we're still applying the same config, we're still analyzing the traffic in the same manner, but we are working with a copy of that data. And then last but not least, what we're able to do here is a passive mode. Maybe you're in a scenario, maybe you're in an appointment where you only have one interface that is available. And because of that only one interface being physically available, I want to make sure this is abundantly clear, you're still working with a copy of the data just like you did in the inline tap mode, both of these modes still work with a copy of the data, but here again, the passive mode is working with only one interface. Maybe you're in a scenario where you have a limited number of physical interfaces that are left. Not only physical number of interfaces left on the appliance, but maybe even physical number of ports that are available to you on the connecting switch. Now, there are going to be some times, it happens not often at all, but it is a reality where sometimes maybe the hardware fails or the operating system fails or even a software module, an analysis module might fail. So in those cases, of course, connectivity, reachability is paramount. So in those cases where we have one of these three scenario failures, we can do an option known as fail to wire. This is available on certain firepower appliances where we're able to install physical net mods or network modules. These are cards with alternate interfaces where in the event of one of these three failures, we're able to again forward around that failure through the additional interface on the network module. So the outage, let's say for example, we had a, a physical interface fail or we recently upgraded the operating system and the upgrade failed. We can still have connectivity, of course, without all of our analysis and security options, but in that scenario, it's going to be better than having a complete, a complete outage. All right, let's continue on. We're once again getting into our deployment modes or our deployment options. Now with our layer three routed mode, literally a bump in the stack, because please note when they say stack, they're referring to IP stack, but please note different subnets on, for example, the firepower appliance interfaces, we have our transparent mode, a layer two mode, where this time it's just going to be a bump in the wire. So a physical connection once again, but please note this is all on the exact same, in this example, the 1022 subnet. And then guys, last but not least, I do not want you thinking that this is a third deployment option, no. We're simply saying that the appliance, your, let's say, firewall or IPS appliance, can be a physical appliance. Let's say, for example, a, a Firepower 2100 series, or they can be a virtual appliance, such as an ASAV. Again, maybe you're in a physical deployment or you're in a virtualized data center. So you have, for example, the ability to run routed mode, physical, virtual, transparent mode, physical or virtual. You have those options with your we often just refer to this as the form factor of your appliance, the form factor. So there we are. We went over, if you ask me, the actual managed device. Once again, the ASA with firepower threat defense or the firepower threat defense appliance. And now we're going over our firepower management center, or I should say we're revisiting the firepower management center. Remember again, guys, no matter how you slice it, this is also an appliance. It one more time can be a physical appliance, it can be a virtual appliance or a pre-built virtual machine. 
Bottom line is, after you first deploy the firewall IPS appliance, let's say again the Firepower Threat Defense Appliance, you're going to do an initial device configuration, which we're going to go over in the next couple slides, and then you'll end up registering this with the Firepower Management Center, adding a device, and then all communication is going to be done over SSL TLS encryption, bi-directional communication. So if you will, before we move on, we have to deploy the physical security appliance. Again, in this example, the Firepower Threat Defense Appliance. So look at all these different configuration options. The, the key phrase there is configuration options, setup options, again, plural. Folks, what we're able to do is the good old fashioned, old school CLI on a serial port, like we do, we have been doing for, uh, my goodness, well over 20 years. We can also go through an SSH connection. Again, if there's IP on the appliance, which is really good because they already come with a default 192.168.45.45. So you would plug your laptop, again via an available switch, into the appliance and have an IP address on your laptop on the same 192.168.45 network. Or guys, option number three is you can connect in physically go in, lay hands on the appliance, and plug into USB keyboard and do, well, of course you need a monitor, USB keyboard and connect in through there. Then notice our initial configuration. So if you will, let's say that what we're doing is going over good old fashioned console. That's the one that I'm used to doing the most. We need to provide these minimum configuration options. And I want to keep it real simple before we even show you the, the interface, the, the menu system. We need to be able to provide IP connectivity so we can do everything else, maybe over SSH. We can do everything else with the on-box GUI, or again, we can do everything else with the Firepower Management Center. So once again, we connect in, log in with admin, and our default password of capital A in admin, 123. Please note, we're accepting the EULA, the end user license agreement. Then we're getting into our base configuration, changing that password. I almost said if we want, to a security guy like me, the answer is absolutely you're going to change that password. And then please note, yes to configuring IPv4, no to configuring IPv6. And folks, I want to say it again and again, providing base connectivity through an IP address, subnet mask, our default gateway. But I want to be clear, this is going to all be on the management interface. We're defining a fully qualified domain name for the generation of the public and private keys and the self-signed certificate. And we're defining a search domain. So if we were to just put in a end device host name, let's say FTD01, it'll fill in the .lab.local search domain for us. Then folks, notice where we are. We're defining, we're really just continuing on with the last interface, but under the next slide, we're defining which mode the Firepower appliance is going to run in. And then once again, how do we want to manage the device? This one is very, very important because if we were to say yes, this is referring to the on box option that we talked about a moment ago. Of course, we want to do this through the Firepower Management Center appliance, whether it be physical appliance or virtual appliance. And then please note, we went ahead and said no, and then now we're going to use the configure manager command to add in the address of the FMC, the Firepower Management Center appliance. And then this is a passphrase that is nothing public, nothing you have to go in and register or download. It's defined by the Firepower Management Center appliance for registering new devices. So please keep that in this example, the ABC123 in mind as we move forward. Folks, we're still here again at the command line. We do a show network and we're able to very, very simply just confirm the values that we put in, even all the way on down to IP connectivity and DNS information. Now with the appliance, the security appliance initially set up, 
Please understand, if at any time you're on the screen here and you realize, oops, I messed up something, I want to go in and change some or even all of these attributes, folks, we're going to do it again at the command line with the configure network set of commands. What do I mean? Well, the configure network HTTP proxy allows me to define an address and port for proxy. And if again, it's doing authentication as well. Folks, the configure network IPv4 manual allows me to set up my address, mask, and my default gateway. Configure network host name, DNS, allows me to set up my fully qualified domain name and my DNS servers. So one more time, the configure network commands allow me at the command line of the managed device to go in and change what I may have entered erroneously in the setup utility. Please note what we're doing. Let's say this is a firepower based firewall and we just deployed that. Folks, now what we're doing is we're going over to the firepower management center management appliance and once again having to do our initial setup. So we open up our, in this example, SSH connection. We are changing to the super user and doing or a sudo configure dash network. I hope the configure network words sound familiar to you because again, that's what the, the commands, if I can back up just a couple slides, the configure network commands that we were doing back on the managed device. The only difference here is we have ourselves a dash in this command on the firepower management center. And folks, I want to say it again and again, all we're doing is providing base IP connectivity so we can do everything else, for example, inside of the GUI. So notice, we want to configure IPv4. Here is my address, my default mask based upon the class of the address, and my default gateway. And then we see here again an echoing of, hey, you just configure this, is this stuff right, and then you can accept it. And then please note how we're not continuing on with doing IPv6. And folks, what I like a lot here is at the end of this menu system, this menu setup, initial setup as the book is calling it, is it's literally telling you, okay, you're done with the initial setup. Why don't you go and finish everything else here? Use your favorite browser, HTTPS, into this management address that you just gave me. And now, when you manage into here, no, this is not the screen you're going to get. You're going to get that familiar Firepower Management Center login screen that we talked about in a previous topic. But once you connect in, you're going to click on your devices and go on down to add a device. So devices tab, device management, click on add device as we mentioned a moment ago. And I want to stress you're echoing the address that you defined at the, for example, command line of the managed appliance. Folks, you're giving it, I cannot stress enough, a display name. This is not the host name. It's a display name. The actual host name is controlled either in a configuration policy on the Firepower Management Center or on the appliance itself. This is just a display name inside of the graphical representation. Remember that registration key? I know you're all saying yes. The registration key, again, that we define at the command line of the managed appliance. We can define this or place this into a group of appliances, which simply allows us to work smarter, not harder. And what I mean by that is our ability to push configuration changes down to a group of devices at once when they have a policy that applies to all of those devices. You can also go in and define an access control policy right from here. Guys, otherwise no traffic is going to be passing through this managed appliance. Remember from our last subject, our last topic, we have smart licensing options. And this one is a little bit te uh, technical or geeky, if you will. If we have ourselves a NADing appliance between the Firepower Management Center and the managed device, we can define our unique NAD ID right here between those two. And again, allow the Firepower Management Center to identify the public address or post-natted address to be able to get to the actual appliance that it manages. So guys, please note, we just talked about again, device, device management, and then add device. And that's where we saw this option, this interface right here. 
Once we are done registering, I want to be clear if the address and that registration key is correct, then we should see the new, one more time, display name and some information, especially of the product line, the type of appliance. And then from there, we can go in and delete the device registration or spend really a lot of our topics to follow on editing the registered devices. So once again, a quick review of now you have your devices picked based upon your environment, based upon your throughput needs and your features needs. We have already defined the two high-level categories of components. That is the managed device, for example, the firepower appliance and the management device, the firepower management center. Now we have to go in and deploy the appliance, deploy the managed appliance. For example, we'll deploy it in true inline mode. Once again, the devices have been picked and deployed. We have to go in and give a base management, base IP connectivity. We'll do that, for example, on the box at the command line of the firepower security appliance and then on the box at the command line of the firepower management center appliance. And then from the firepower management center, we add a device and point to the IP connectivity and the passphrase, for lack of a better word, registration key of the managed device so we can add that firepower appliance to be managed by firepower management center. Thank you for listening.